Having done all the theoretical stuff, let's now move on to more practical oriented kind of understanding. So we take an example, the same data that we quoted in the first few slides that CT severity score appear to be correlated with age. Now somebody may come and say that yes, if I have a particular age, then I can maybe determine the CT severity score. So we are basically implying that the age has an impact on the CT severity score. So age becomes your independent variable and the CT severity score becomes your dependent variable. Running a regression, we get the following results. Now I can use any software to do that. I can use a simple Excel software, Excel uh, package. R software or the R programming language and uh, SPSS, SAS, whatsoever, Python. So this is a typical result set that you get on any of the softwares. So the first thing that we need to look out for is the R square. Right? So the R square here tells you, as I said, R square here uh, is the goodness of fit statistic or it gives you the explanatory power of the model. So the R square here is 0.655, which means that 65.5% variation in the CT severity score is explained by age. Age explains that much of variation. So what is unexplained then? So the unexplained is nothing but 35% variation. So the remaining 35% is unexplained. Maybe you should include more variables, maybe the functional form may be incorrect, etc. So all that is uh, taken care of by this 35%. So what is more important is 65.5%. The next question is whether this 65.5% can be taken as significant. That means whether this R square should be perceived as closer to zero or more than zero. So for that we have the F test which is as I said which is given in the form of an ANOVA table. So this is your F test, the ANOVA table. So there are three things that we need to be looking upon. In fact, the most important thing here is the P value. So the P value, since it is less than 0.05, note that we, we usually uh, perform the test at 5% level of significance until and unless anything else is specified. So since the P value is less than 0.05, we may reject the null hypothesis and what was your null hypothesis that R square is equal to zero. So we can safely conclude that this R square of 65.5% is actually greater than zero and hence the model is good enough to be considered. It, it, it may not be very exceptionally good because exceptionally good models have R square in the vicinity of one. But since this is almost more than 50%, so obviously and the p-value says that they should, they should be considered to be greater than zero. So therefore the model is worth considering. So these are nothing but the 670.132 value is nothing but the explained sum of squares. 352 is the unexplained sum of squares and the total variation in y is 1022.8. So if you divide uh, uh, 1022.8 by 670, so you will get 0.655 as the R square. Now another thing to note in this ANOVA table is this mean squares due to residual, the 19.592. Note that this is nothing but an unbiased estimator of your error variance. If you remember the formula sigma cap square, which was summation EI square upon N minus 2. So if you don't want to remember those formulae, then this 19.592 is nothing but an estimator of your variance, right? So, and then we move on to the next table, which gives you the coefficients, coefficients of the regression equation. So the coefficient table, the first column, the second column rather, is nothing but the coefficients. So the column uh, title coefficients are the point estimates and these are the interval estimates for the coefficient. So B0 is 2.427, B1 is 0.229, so those are the point estimates. And if one wants to know the interval estimates, so B0 lies between, beta0 lies between minus 2.414 beta 1 lies between 0.147 to 0.311. So these are the corresponding standard errors of the estimate. So everything is given in the result. So as I said earlier, you don't need to remember any formula. What is again more important is whether 
these values are significantly different from zero. So the first value appears to be far away from zero. The second value appears to be, you know, closer to zero. So do we perceive this value to be zero, almost zero, and this value to be different from zero? No, we cannot do that directly. So we use the test of significance, the t-test. The p-value for the t-test is 0 0.306. Since this is greater than 0 0.05, we may accept the null hypothesis and conclude that this intercept of 2.427 is as good as 0. The p-value here is less than 0 0.05, so we may reject the null hypothesis and conclude that this 0.229 should be taken as significantly different from zero. So there appears to be a positive correlation as we saw in the initial few slides. And here it says that the impact of age on your CT score is 0.229. So as age increases by one unit, the CT severity score increases by 0.229 units. Right? So more, more detailed analysis. So the fitted equation can be written as the intercept y cap is equal to the intercept plus the slope 0.229 into the x variable so remember y cap here is nothing but your ct severity score x is your age so we can make predictions so i just substitute x is equal to 19 in this equation i get y is equal to 7 x is equal to 30 y is equal to 9 x is equal to 45 y is equal to 13 so uh, we can just give values for the age and we can obtain the estimates of the CT severity score. So this gives us a fair idea as to how you are placed as far as age is concerned, what kind of CT severity score you may expect in, in case you are infected. And please don't take this data very seriously. It is just an hypothetical data set. It's not a, a real data set.